right, boys and girls, so for this next part of our unit, we are going to be talking about measuring time. And time is how we figure out what we're doing during each part of the day. At the beginning of the year, we learned about measuring time, and we learned how to tell time to the hour. And um, this week, we are going to be talking about not only telling time to the hour, but also to the half hour. And what we learned about fractions is going to help us with that. But before we get started um, measuring time, let's go over the different types of clocks and parts of the clock. So we use two different types of clocks to help us tell time. The first clock is an analog clock. Can you say analog clock? Great job. This is a circular clock that you'll see maybe in your classroom on the walls um, or maybe on the front of a watch. And it has 12 numbers on it. It also has two hands. There is a short hand and a long hand. The short hand is the hour hand, and it moves very slowly around the clock because we only have 24 hours in a day. The longer um, hand is called the minute hand, and the minute hand moves quicker than the hour hand. Every rotation, every time the minute hand goes completely around the clock, that means that 60 minutes have passed and we're in a new hour. So right now, the way that we can tell uh, the time on this analog clock is three, let me move that down a little bit, three o'clock. This clock is showing us that we're starting at the top of the hour. Can everyone say three o'clock? Great job. Now let's look at our digital clock. Can you say digital clock? A digital clock is a clock you probably are used to seeing a lot more. It's the clock you see on your iPad. It's the clock you might see on your oven or microwave or on your computer or cell phone. And this tells us time with numbers. So there are two sets of numbers on a digital clock separated by a colon. The first number tells us the hour. So what number is this? 10. So this tells us that we're in within the 10 o'clock hour. And then this tells us how many minutes have passed. What number is this? 30. So that means that this says 1030. Can you say 1030? That means that 30 minutes have passed after 10. Let's learn a little bit more about the parts of the clock by watching a Brain Pop Junior with um, Moby and Annie. <laughs> What you reading? You can't actually read a clock, Moby. Well, a clock doesn't tell you much of a story. It tells you the time. A clock doesn't actually talk. It just, well, what is a clock? I know that a clock is a tool that we use to measure time, just like we use tools to measure height. All clocks measure the same time, even if they look really different. This is the type of clock we have in our classroom, and I have my own clock in my bedroom. And there's a clock in our living room. Oh yeah, and Grandpa has a clock on his arm. A watch. Hmm. I guess clocks can tell time in different ways. Well, Grandpa's watch is digital, and the time is written out in numbers. And Mr. Patchouli says the clock in our classroom is analog. You have to figure out the time by looking at the face. The face of the clock is this big circle part. Just like we have a face and arms, an analog clock has a face and arms. What is the face of a clock? The face of a clock is the part with the numbers on it. Like on this clock, the face is the white part. There are 12 numbers that go around the face of a clock. Just like they're 12 inches on a ruler or 12 months in a year. The 12 is always on the top and the six is always on the bottom. Hmm, but the face and numbers don't tell time by themselves. What do the hands on the clock do? The hands are the part of the clock that point to the numbers. I know they aren't really hands, that's just what they're called. 
The little hand is called the hour hand because it shows the hour, and the big hand is called the minute hand because it shows the minutes. While the minute hand goes all the way around the clock, the hour hand moves from one number to the next. So the hour hand moves slower than the minute hand, and the hands always move in one direction. It's called clockwise. No, the hands never go backwards. That's called counterclockwise. But check it out, Moby. There are clocks everywhere. I guess people need clocks to know the time. But why is time so important? Every morning, my alarm clock wakes me up for school. Come on, Moby. It's time to wake up. We don't want to be late. I know the bus comes at eight o'clock, so we have to make sure we're at the bus stop before it comes. I guess time is important because we use it to plan the day. Moby, it's not time for lunch yet. There are a lot of times to remember, like our school starts at eight thirty. Oh, and we have music at two o'clock. And I know the most important time of all: free time. <laughs> all right. So now that we know why time is so important and the different parts of a clock, we are going to be practicing telling time on a clock together. <laughs> 